and welcome to this year's Turf Tips. I'm Todd Hicks. And I'm Joe Rimmelspach. On behalf of OTF and the Department of Plant Pathology, welcome. First thing for weather this week, it uh, looks like we're going to start out to finally get a little warm. Looks like we're going to finally hit the 70s, high 50s at night, more like spring high temperatures. With these cooler temperatures we're experiencing right now, most of you have been under the gun and waiting and ready with your sprayers to make those early dollar spot applications. Not such a big deal since we turned colder. Uh, we also don't have to worry about leaf spot too much because with all the rain we've had, we've also had some nice sunny windy days to dry us up. What are you seeing, Joe? Well, there's several areas I want to mention. I continue on with the diseases. Um, as far as golf courses, we may see some uh, microdokin patch, pink snow mold. That's going to be driven mainly by water. So if we get, we happen to get into a period or your areas experience a lot of rainfall, wet conditions with high humidity for 20 hours or so, cloudy conditions, that could fire up again. So be aware of that if you've had some of that coming out of winter or this spring, make sure you're covered with fungicide, uh, fungicide program. Uh, red thread also we're seeing on, on high cut turf. I've seen that. We've gotten a number of samples, on, uh, especially on rye grass and those susceptible varieties. As far as general lawn care, a couple things to keep in mind, of course, mowing, mow, mow, mow. Uh, if, it, if we have warmer temperatures, it, it really, it's hard to keep up. We realize that, do the best job you can with a sharp blade and at least a high mowing height. Fertilizer applications, I just want to mention, um, there's a lot of discussion about phosphorus these days, about um, a lot of the products today have very little or no phosphorus. But remember that if you've not used phosphorus on your lawns you're maintaining for a number of years, you may be going to low levels or deficiencies that may reflect poor quality turf or more diseases. As far as crabgrass, you know, we're getting close to the breaking time. Again, weather patterns will, will um, dictate that. Um, I'm sure Dave Gardner, people at Horton Crop, will have some additional information in the future about options and timing on that. Um, one last thing I want to mention though is um, on dry applications, whether it be with ride-on applicators or push behind spreaders, for those of you in the business with all the interest and, and a focus on uh, algae problems in, in the western basin of Lake Erie and in lakes and streams, be very cognizant that the granular product is to go on target areas, turf. So, do everything you can to avoid non-target areas, pavements, hard surfaces, etc., so that we don't have these products then moving into the water stream and uh, causing uh, or adding to any kind of pollution problem. So with that, keep the, uh, if you have questions, call us, email us, and we're uh, hoping you have a great week. That's it for this week. If you're not a member of OTF, might want to think about re-upping or becoming a member. We look forward to talking to you the rest of the growing season.